little more serious, but it's our last speech. Consider this. Is there anything worse than death? What if I told you I was going to rob you? Not of your house, not of your car, nothing like that. Instead, I'm going to rob you of your thoughts and your memories. I'll start with the small ones, like the one that reminds you to go grocery shopping. But then I'll think bigger. All of your high school memories, gone. How to read, gone. Who your mom is, gone. And after I take all this from you, I'm going to put it in the garbage can, and then I'm going to light the garbage can on fire. Do you still want to be alive? This is the exact situation my grandma is in right now. That's because my grandma has Alzheimer's disease. And while technically she's still living, Alzheimer's has stolen her thoughts, her memories, and effectively her life. Today, over 40 million people around the world are suffering like my grandma, but yet we are not significantly addressing the problem. Tonight, I'd like to discuss with you why the United States should increase its funding for Alzheimer's research to $2 billion per year. I'd like to begin by giving you a brief background on Alzheimer's and how increased funding today will eliminate far greater costs in the future. Alzheimer's is a fatal neurodegenerative disease that begins quietly. It robs patients of their memory and thinking skills. At first, it could be small nuances like forgetting a phone number or where someone lives. But as the disease progresses, memory loss becomes more and more severe to the point where patients can no longer walk, talk, or even use the bathroom alone. Ultimately, the disease results in death. Fatality occurs when the brain forgets how to send signals to vital organs in the body. And Alzheimer's begins developing 20 years before symptoms actually occur, which means that any of us in this room, even as college students, could be developing the disease. But here's what makes Alzheimer's disease so devastating. We cannot prevent it, treat it, or cure it. When the disease was discovered in 1901 by Dr. Alois Alzheimer, all he could do was identify the symptoms of the disease. Since then, 116 years later, We've discovered penicillin. We've discovered a vaccine for polio. We've discovered a treatment for AIDS. But still nothing has changed on the Alzheimer's front. Still today, all we can do is identify the symptoms of the disease. We cannot prevent it, treat it, or cure it. And this puts victims in an especially tough position because they're left to fade into a shell of their former self. Imagine being in a doctor's office having the doctor walk in and explain to you that you're slowly going to forget everything that you've ever known and that there's nothing you can do to slow it or stop it. A few months ago, I had the opportunity to meet a gentleman named Greg O'Brien, who was in this exact same position. Greg O'Brien is a 55-year-old writer who was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease two years ago at the age of 53. At the same time he was diagnosed, he was also diagnosed with treatable prostate cancer. He has since decided to not treat his cancer in the hopes that it kills him before he suffers through Alzheimer's disease. But despite the millions of devastating stories, like Greg's, the United States government is not playing its part in the fight against Alzheimer's disease. Funding for Alzheimer's from the NIH is far lower than what's given towards comparable diseases. Take cancer, for example. According to the NIH, Alzheimer's currently receives about a tenth of the funding that cancer receives each year. Yet, Alzheimer's costs Americans twice as much as cancer does each year and causes a similar number of deaths <coughs> each year. These numbers are very clear. But without a cure for Alzheimer's, this disease will truly become a national health crisis. This is the case for two primary moral and economic reasons. First of all, the number of Americans suffering from this disease is set to skyrocket. According to the CDC, there are currently 5 million Americans suffering from Alzheimer's disease. But as the baby boomers age, this number is going to rise dramatically. By the year 2050, without a cure, there will be over 13 million Americans suffering from Alzheimer's disease. Those 13 million people will be comprised of our parents, our aunts, our uncles, and even 
some of us. We have a human moral responsibility to consider a threat to any single human life, let alone a threat to 13 million lives. The second reason that Alzheimer's disease will become such a crisis is because of its expense on our economy. As I discussed earlier, Alzheimer's currently costs the, Amer the American people just over $200 billion per year. This is in expenses like nursing homes, hospital bills, caregivers. But as the baby boomers age, this number is going to rise dramatically. It's just like the number of people who have the disease. By the year 2050, Alzheimer's will cost the American taxpayers over $1 trillion per year. $1 trillion placed directly on the shoulders of U.S. taxpayers. According to the NIH, this will be the most expensive disease that the United States has ever faced. We rely on the government to prevent us from entering fiscal crises like Alzheimer's is set to create. So when we consider that 13 million people will suffer each year from this disease, and when we consider that $1 trillion will be placed on the shoulders of U.S. taxpayers, it becomes incredibly clear that we need a cure for Alzheimer's disease sooner rather than later. Thus, I propose that the United States government increase its funding for Alzheimer's research from $500 million a year to $2 billion per year. In 2012, a panel of independent scientists from around the country determined that $2 billion would be the minimum amount needed in order to truly accelerate Alzheimer's research. But in reality, $2 billion would just be a stepping stone. Remember, Alzheimer's is now a cancer-sized problem, which means that it deserves cancer-sized funding. We saw that cancer receives $5 billion of funding per year. In order to truly cure Alzheimer's, we are going to need at least $2 billion in funding to start. But a $2 billion commitment from the government would be far more impactful than just the actual money. It will model the way for the rest of our society to acknowledge this disease. You see, today, Americans whisper the word Alzheimer's because the government whispers the word Alzheimer's. Professional sports teams wear pink in support of breast cancer research. Apple creates a line of red products for AIDS research. But we don't see the same number of public campaigns for Alzheimer's research. Even here at Vanderbilt, we host Dance Marathon for children's health. We host Relay for Life for cancer research, but we do absolutely nothing for Alzheimer's research. Tonight I'm wearing a purple shirt because purple is the national color in the fight against Alzheimer's. I truly believe that increased commitment from the government will help to bring this disease from the shadows and give it the attention that it deserves. And today, Alzheimer's funding means more than ever before. According to researchers at Penn, we finally know enough about the brain and this disease that we can begin to have real hope for a cure. Finally, after 116 years of waiting, we may be able to cure this disease in the next 10 to 20 years. In short, a small investment today will save us a moral and economic crisis tomorrow. Today is the day to fund Alzheimer's research. When I was young, my Nana taught me how to walk, talk, dance, swim. She was like a second mother to me. When I turned seven, she sat me down in her house and she told me that one day I may have to care for her just like she once cared for me. But as every, any seven-year-old would, I didn't believe her. When I was 12, I had to direct my Nana down the ski mountain that she grew up skiing down. When I was 16, I had to explain to my Nana that I was not her husband, I was her grandson. And when I was 18, I helped my mom change my Nana's diaper, just like my Nana once did for me. I dream of a day where no grandmas have to begin saying a long goodbye to their seven-year-old grandsons. I dream of a day Pardon me. I dream of a day where we turn this tremendous pain into tremendous action. I dream of a day without Alzheimer's. Thank you very much.